Hi everyone, Carmen Broxma here with Choose Joy with Carmen. And in today's video, I'm doing something a little differently. So this month, Stampin' Up! has dedicated the whole month to celebrate watercolor during World Watercolor Month. And so I want to come on here on Wednesdays kind of like a watercolor Wednesday and kind of show you some of the techniques that you can do with watercolor. And so today's card, we are going to focus on the Celebrate Sunflowers set. And I'm going to be doing the technique where it's no line watercolor. And the way you do that is, and I'm using a bunch of colors here. I mean, you, I have some off to the side here that you can't even see, but I, you first have to stamp whatever image that you want to do no line with, with something so that, uh, lightly, so that you can see where to color. So, um, they did theirs in Sahara Sand, so I thought I would give that a try. So I'm going to just ink up this sunflower. We're just going to be working with the small one here. And I'm not going to ink it up. I mean, I'm going to ink it up nicely, but I'm not going to like try to get it really, really dark. And I'm going to be stamping it on some watercolor paper from Stampin' Up. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp this down. And like I said, I'm going to just try to get it um, on there so that I can see where to color. But I don't want to like really worry about it being really deep. So that's what I came up with. And so now it gives me a guide to where to put my color for my watercoloring. So on my logo, my sunflower for my Choose Joy with Carmen logo is not your typical colors of a sunflower. So I was going to try to aim for uh, that kind of look and so what I did was I kind of thought how how am I going to achieve that so my you'd have to go out and look at my logo but it has a lot of purples and golds and colors in it so we're going to be using a um oh what do they call these where you put the water in there I forgot I just I just drew a blank on what it's called and I will think of it here soon and I'm gonna grab a piece of um, paper towel to have handy here so that I can clean off my brush here because this is where you put water in the brush and then when you squeeze it water comes out aqua painters what they're called <laughs> Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Fresh Freesia, and you're supposed to be able to just squeeze this, but I guess I don't have the strength because I'm going to try to get some ink on the lid there. But I'm not that successful, and if you're not that successful, you can always get some reinker and put it in the lid there, whatever works. Or I'm just going to grab some right off of the pad here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to focus on just getting color on all the leaves. And I mean the petals, not the leaves. And so I'm just going to go ahead and try to get color on all of them like that. So that it gives it that kind of purple look. So let me go ahead and do that and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, I finished putting some color with the Fresh Freesia all over and the cool thing about it is because we did stamp it in the Sahara Sand, it kind of, um, you know, blends it all together, but that's what gives it the whole watercolor look, right? So now we're going to go ahead and focus on the middle here and I'm going to do soft suede and... I'm just going to go around the parameter of the whole inside of the flower 
and I'm not concerned about it running into, you know, the other areas because that's what whole watercolor looks like, right? So I'm just kind of going to add some color like that. And then if you wanted it a little darker, I'm going to kind of tap it off there. If you wanted it a little darker, you could come back in after it's kind of dried a little and kind of just add a little bit more color. And you just keep doing this until you reach the desire you like. So if you want to add a little more to one side than the other, and maybe you think that's too much, you just kind of tap off your brush, kind of just go in there until you get something that you like, like that. Then I'm going to go ahead and focus on the really the inside, the very inside of the flower. And I'm taking the Early Espresso. And you kind of want to, I mean, I like to dry it off a little bit, but you don't have to. You can just let them all mush together. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of add darker in the middle here. And then, and like I said, you could just keep letting it dry, adding more color doing whatever you need to do to get the desired look that you want. So I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to start focusing on the um, crushed curry because I just want the tips of this sunflower to have um, a little bit of, of the sunflower look. And so I'm going to start with the crushed curry and then I'm going to go back in and add a little bit of um, mango melody. I'm going to try to see if I can squeeze that. Yeah, that worked much better. But see, these are the older style and I, I don't have as much trouble as squeezing the newer ones. So now I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of that and I'm just going to focus now on the tips of each of the petals. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I will come back and show you the result of that. Okay, so now I've added that to the tips. And if you feel that it's too much, you can always use your water again to pull the color away. But I'm going to go ahead now and start focusing on the um, rich razzleberry, which is um, kind of what the color of my <clears throat> logo has in it. And then that way, while I let that, um, um, <clears throat> whatever, that crushed curry dry a little, I'm going to start focusing on... <clears throat> <clears throat> the pulling it from the middle and pulling it up into the petals and you could overlap the um, crushed curry also but it's just I'm just going to be doing something like that I don't know if you can see that. So let me get that done and then I'll come back and show you what that looks like. Okay, so here's what that looks like when I went ahead and added that. And then I felt like it was getting too much of the rich raspberry, so I added some more fresh freesia and I just kind of blended it up into the tips of those petals again. So now I want to focus a little bit more on that darker area in the middle and work on that. So I think, um, and then after that, I'll start working on the uh, leaves. So let me go ahead and start adding a little bit more of that um, soft suede because I just think it's a little light in the middle there. But... 
that's what's so much fun about this is you can just literally just keep smushing color around to get the desired look that you have and when you start smushing colors together like this color here um the soft suede with that rich razzleberry it just really <clears throat> adds something <clears throat> so it just gives really gives it that dimension and i love it so i don't do much watercoloring and i probably should do more of it because it is so pretty so now i'm going to go ahead and try to darken up that <clears throat> um center center with the early espresso a little bit more darker in that area and i'll just kind of i just think it's so fun to just do this so now i'm going to go ahead and take my soft succulent because that's what i want for my leaves and i'm going to use soft succulent and evening evergreen for the darker part so let me see, I couldn't squeeze that. So just gonna go ahead and grab some off of the corner here and then just kind of color those leaves with the water painter here. And then if it bleeds into the other colors, it's really, that's the whole idea, right? We like that look. So I'm gonna do this other leaf, but see that this no line watercolor is based on the fact that we stamped it originally with the Sahara sand. So then when you do all this coloring, you really don't have that stark color of line. So now I'm just gonna set that aside a little and try to pick up a little of the evening evergreen just to add a little bit of darkness in between the petals here for a little shading and then see but the water just makes it spread right and that's what makes it so cool and now you know if you don't like something you can go back in and keep adding color until you you get the desire that you want so I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to die cut it and then I'm going to come back and show you the card and uh, what I'm going to use to put it together. I'll be right back. Okay, so let me show you. Um, this is the one that I did earlier um, that, that I did before I, I started the one that I was showing you. And I was sitting here thinking, oh, let me put some dots and let's be, you know, let's put something different. So I just got my rich Razzleberry marker out and did some dots there. This is the one that I did today showing you the technique. And so I put rich Razzleberry dots and I also put some in the middle of, of the um, soft suede. So you could do just about anything to fancy it up and maybe I put too many dots on this. I don't know. I mean, no matter what, you're not going to get the same look every time. But, you know, it's fun to do. And see, there's no lines there. So it's just basic watercoloring. So the papers that I chose since I was trying to match... Um, the flower I had to go through several designer series papers so I'm using a portion of this one the butterfly kisses and let's see what am I using on that um, I can't remember which side oh I think it's this one right here I'm using this side of this paper and then I'm using a portion of uh, the back of one of these, I think it was this one right here. And I just kind of focused on the colors that kind of pulled out the colors 
in here. So this one here had a rainbow color, so I kind of just cut a piece from there. And then I'm using the one from here, from the Tebow Boutique. I'm using the back of this one right here. So, and I'm also going to be using, um, these are the colors that I chose. I'm going to use Crushed Curry for my card base. And then I picked uh, Rich Razzleberry and then Shaded Spruce because I felt that the uh, leaves match that. So I'm going to be laying my designer papers over um, the Shaded Spruce. And then I'm going to be matting it with the Rich Razzleberry. And Sorry about that. My phone decided to set off an alarm even though I had do not disturb. So that's why that messed up there for a second. But basically all I was saying was I was going to go ahead and put the sunflower over that rich razzleberry circle and then put the whole card together and come back and show you the result. So I will be back in a minute to show you the finale. Okay, I am back, and here is the finale, and I think it came out really cute. What I did was on this bottom DSP is I stamped that sentiment in Rich Razzleberry, and then on the inside, I just stamped the sunflower with the um, color of the base card, which is Crush Curry, and did Crush Curry and Rich Razzleberry on the Let's Celebrate You. So there's that card, and I hope you enjoyed learning how to do the no-line watercoloring. I hope to make a video each Wednesday in honor of what Stampin' Up! is celebrating with the um, Celebrate Watercolor during World Watercolor Month. So my plan is to come back each Wednesday and show you a different technique for watercoloring. I think they had seven techniques, and so we may go past the month unless I can fit two techniques in one video. We'll see. But basically, this video is basically going to be just focusing on the technique, so it's not going to be focusing so much on the details of the card itself, but mostly the technique. Alrighty, so I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And if you um, are a subscriber to my channel, thank you so much. If you're new to my channel, I would appreciate you subscribing. And if you want to share it with your friends and uh, so that other people can see this, I would appreciate it. Okay, well, you all have a great week, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.